Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of my Nano Reef Tank. Today we will be talking about the good and some bad things that happened to the tank. As long as visiting a local reefer whose tank just kind of blew my mind, so make sure you stay tuned. Alright, so here is a quick time lapse of the torch you guys have just seen. I just put in my tank and here is it opening up. I basically won this torch from a Facebook group. I basically just got really lucky. If I remember right, this is a Jester torch. And I think what makes it a Jester torch is that it's a gold torch with super bright green tips. It's a single head as of right now, but it definitely looks like it's about to split soon. Alright, so here's a better view of the Jester torch. You can definitely see the gold and the super bright like lime green tips that it has. Here's a better view of it top down. You can really see the gold streaks running through. And I swear, all torches look better top down, in my opinion. Alright, so here we are at a local reefer's house. I basically saw a post on the Dallas Fort Worth forum stating uh, somebody selling their torch and it was at a great price. So I decided to hit him up and we had a range of meeting for later on the day. Later that day, he messaged me back saying that he sold the torch earlier in the day to somebody who messaged him before me and he apologized saying that he should have known and it really wasn't his fault. Um, you know, the guy just came before me, so that's not his fault. Uh, I asked him if he had any other corals for sale because he had some great prices. He sent me a picture of his tank and I was kind of like mind blown by how amazing his reef tank looked. I was interested in a Blasto and one of his SPS, so I definitely had to come and take some videos of his tank. So here it is. You can see from the footage that, you know, his colonies are pretty nice grown. He keeps his glass super clean, like spotless, and his secret was using a UV sterilizer and one of those filter socks. I kid you not, his refugium was probably cleaner than my tank, and even the skimmer was spotless. He lives by the Lake Jake Adams saying the best way to keep a reef tank is to keep things simple and you know it was just that. So here are his 8 cans you can see the heads are super fat like I don't even know how he got them this big mine, mine are like half the size. If you guys couldn't tell he is currently running some T5 lighting and this is the first time I've seen T5 in person and I can just say like those reefers, those old school guys that talk about T5 and how they swear it's definitely the best option. I don't, I can definitely see it now, like running LEDs. I have some like shadowing that goes on with my corals, but if you look at his tank and the T5, it like covers every part of the tank. And that's what really impressed me. You guys know I love Euphilia and this is one of the pieces that caught my eye. This is a single hammer colony, not two different ones, a single one but half of it's like purple, half of it is green, which is pretty cool. So unfortunately, the owner Lee, he is in the process of breaking down this tank. He has been reefing since he was really young. If I were to guess, he's in his 30s now. He's starting up a family, so that's taking time away from him. And you know, he's, one of the things he mentioned was it's a shame that only his family gets to see his tank. And I, I have to agree, so that's why I'm sharing this with you guys and I hope that one day he gets back to the hobby. So yeah, thank you Lee for taking the time to talk with me and letting me film your tank. I hope you guys enjoyed this tank as much as I did. Sadly, we are back to my tank and before I show you some of the stuff I got at Lee's, I wanted to share with you my Sunkiss Bounce here. It has definitely quadrupled in size over like the past two months I would say and I'm super happy where it's at right now. There is no signs of a baby, but let's hope that one comes soon. Sadly, like a day after I filmed this, it caught a stray frog spawn polyp, but I think I saved it in time, so no harm was done. Alright, so for those of you that don't know, I have been battling like a Zoa eating Nudibranch in the past like two months. And if you guys could guess what Zoa this one has been eating, I'll give you like a penny because it should be really easy to guess but if you guys don't know it has been eating my other chaos and the craziest thing to me is how they take on the color and the pattern of the zoa it is so cool like the science behind these guys but it has been doing some harm to my roof tank this one gandhi i used to have bleached out really hard and lost all its color but hopefully this guy bounces back it definitely still has some life in it 
Sadly, I lost this new possum rest I got in the last video. Not many of you guys saw it, so this may be new. But he was active and he was eating. I just came home one day and I saw that he was gone and my crab was eating him. I do feel a lot of guilt because, you know, when you buy fish in the hobby, you kind of have to take care of them. And, you know, it sucks when you fish die in your tank. But, yeah, so kind of unfortunate that this happened. Alright, so here are a few changes I made out with the old. So I ended up selling a little pack to somebody locally for a decent price, I think. So I got rid of this red gani. I got rid of this big hermit crab, you know, the guy that has been bulldozing all my frags, basically. Nothing's wrong with him. He's reef safe. Inside the coral pack, I also included this eight can that I forgot to record and a free other chaos frag. And I also included these two fat yumas that I had. Here's a really nice close up what they look like. I kind of pulled them out of the water, so it may look a little funky, but amazing macro shot. And it even had some babies growing underneath that, which was a little bonus. I think I counted two babies, maybe a third one had a little green dot. Alright, so this is what the tank looks like now. I moved a few things around as you can see. So first we have the torch rock and I just added the gesto torch to it. If we look over here towards the right side, nothing really has changed. Everything's growing out really nice. Here the torches from the top down view. The cotton candy torch isn't getting blasted by the power head anymore so that's really good and it looks a little fluffier today. Now moving on to the sand bed. As you can see, we have this purple and green blasto. It also has some babies around it. And this little baby recordia mushroom, the green one right there at the top. So yeah, shout out to Lee for those. Now we have the regular Zoa rock. And this Aiken rock with these orange Bam Bam Zoas that I moved to the back. I'm trying to sell this one actually, so um, it's going to sit here in the meantime. As you can see, the little white spot on the rock was where this yellow and blue Aiken was. I really enjoyed this one so I'm deciding to keep this one for myself and yeah it kind of really stuck with me. As you can tell from this dirty power head the tank is in need of a water change and some maintenance. I've been kind of lazy so yeah the tank's kind of taking a hit. Next we have the SPS that I got from Lee. This is called the Pac-Man. I'm not too sure what the color is. It looks like a light pink with some yellow tips maybe or green. I'm gonna put it here at the bottom and hopefully it colors up in the future. Now back to the regular SPS, this is the uh, Fire Force Digitata. Here's that little piece I glued onto the wall. I don't really see any nude growth coming out of that, but who knows. Um, but yeah, everything's growing really nicely. New branches come out of the Bonsai Acro. And the Oregon Blue Tour is starting to encrust and the polyps are out, so yeah, good things are coming. The encrusting one, I can see kind of some vertical growth at the bottom, but no promises. The pink acro is still there. The flaming dragon zoas are finally recovering. The golden rod is starting to take off actually, and the green acro is starting to lose that little pink. It's just turning green now. The red robin from worldwide corals is starting to get some new coloring, so that's interesting. But yeah, I've been still battling with cyano and maybe dinos too. I see a lot of bubbles, so it could be a mixture of both. I'm not too sure if I want to use, um, I think, Clean, But it hasn't been negatively impacting my corals so far. But if all things come to it, then I'll probably use Clean. The green frog spawn, I, I lost a few polyps. I'm not sure if it's because the clowns are hosting it or if it's splitting. But yeah, the hammers are doing really well. Everything is growing out. As you can see, the camera is picking up these up really nicely today. And the hammer I moved from last episode is starting to recover that little head that was kind of neglected and had no light. Oh yeah, one neat thing I really wanted to show you guys was the hammer I got from V3S. It was a golden hammer, but now that it's starting to color up, I can see a little hint of green. You can see it too, so first time seeing this on a hammer myself. Alright, so next at the sand bed, we still have the pink Gani that's doing really well. This is the one Gani that's amazing. I think pink Gani just do well in my tank. Anything else does not do well. World Ride Coral's AOI growing out really nicely. We didn't have the Dragon Soul Flavia. I'm really glad that I put this on the sand bed and not something flat because it's kind of growing into like a dome shape that makes it like fluffy. So I really like this coral. The bounce room right here and we're basically back at the torches. So. Yep, that's about it for the tank. 
So yeah, lots of bad recently, but there's still some good in the tank. I also forgot to mention I got these clove polyps from Lee too, and it came with this little sponge. So I dropped that one off in my Pico tank. So this weekend I bought my cap and gown, and that thing was like 200 bucks. And I was destroyed, you know? But when you buy like a $200 coral, it's like nothing because, you know, it's for the hobby. So all good. But anyways, after looking at Lee's tank, I'm starting to think that there's something with the innovative marine like front glass that doesn't make it look too clear. But I'm planning on getting a future tank, probably like a 60 gallon display with a sump. I'm thinking either a Red Sea or a water box. Let me know in the comments what you guys have. I've read some pros and cons for, you know, basically everything. I'm trying to keep the price pretty like reasonable so nothing over like you know 2k but yeah thank you guys for watching today if you like my content make sure you like and subscribe it really helps out with the youtube algorithm hope your tanks are doing well and for non-reefers hope you're saving up for a reef tank other than that i'll see you guys in the next one peace